Have you ever shared a deep link in Power Apps that goes straight to a record, only to realize that anyone could just change the ID in the URL and see data that they shouldn't? In this video, I'll show you how to use the concept of magic links inside of Power Apps. These are shareable links that hide possibly sensitive data, like the record IDs from your data source. These only work for specific users, and they have the option to expire automatically. Let's take a look. Channel members have access to download the apps used in the videos, as well as the YAML code used in the components that I showcase. You can click the join button below the video if you're interested in supporting the channel. When you deep link in Power Apps, you usually pass a parameter in the URL, like record ID equals, and then the ID of the record that you're trying to link to. The app then uses that ID to navigate to a screen and open the record with that ID. This seems simple, but it can be a cause for concern. With SharePoint lists especially, there's a problem in that the IDs for each record are sequential. That means that if somebody changes the number in the URL, they can access other records, even if they shouldn't be able to, in the front end of your Power App. So instead of passing a predictable number, we're going to pass a GUID value for that specific record a token that maps back to a real record, but never exposes that record ID to the user or allows them to navigate to it. That's the core idea behind magic links in that they provide a means of accessing records that the user normally would not be able to. To make this work, we'll start by creating a new SharePoint list called magic links. This list will act as a directory of all the special temporary links that our users will generate. There are a couple key columns in this list that we'll create, one for link ID, and this is the random GUID that will go into the URL parameter of our Power App. We'll store this as a single line of text. Next is the item ID, and this is the real record ID that we're trying to link to. In the case of SharePoint, this would be a number, but this could also be a text value if you're using an auto number field in something like Dataverse. We'll also have a users column, and this is the table of people that are allowed to use this link. This will be a multi-select person column, and if you're using something like Dataverse, you probably would store the email addresses of the selected users in a semicolon delimited list. Next is the expiration column, and this is when the link stops working. This will be a date and time value. Every time a user shares a record, we're going to create a new row in this magic links list. This list will act as an intermediary for our app to take in the link ID from the URL, confirm it is valid, confirm it's not expired, and also confirm that the user has access to it. When those conditions are met, then we want to return the real record ID for us to use in the app. Now let's start to look at how we can implement this in our Power App. To get the link that will be used in our magic links, we can copy the link to play our app and paste it into a notepad. We'll add an ampersand to the end of this link and then the name of our parameter. In this case, we'll call the parameter link ID. And it's important to keep the case of your text in mind as this is case sensitive with exactly how you enter it here. We would insert an equal symbol and then after this, the value that we want to pass in, which will eventually be the unique link ID from our magic links list. We'll just keep this link to the side for a moment as we'll work on creating these links next. To create our magic links, we're going to start by inserting a button on the screen. We'll start by writing a patch function to our magic links list. And here we want to create a new record with the following values. For the title, we can simply use the name of the list that we would be creating a magic link for. In this case, this will be an employee case log list. The link ID is going to be the GUID function, and this will generate a random GUID value. If you're ever concerned about a GUID being reused, you could also add the current time to the end of the GUID to give an extra layer of uniqueness. The item ID will be the ID of the record that we're trying to link to. And in this case, we can simply reference our table control dot selected dot ID. The expiration date will be the date and time that this link expires. Just starting off here for this example, we'll say that the link is valid for five minutes. So we'll use the date add function to add five minutes to the current time. The users column is going to be the table of users that should have access to the link. 
and for this initial setup, I'll just enter my own account manually. All of these values could be entered via on-screen controls to make them dynamic, and I'll show an example of that later on. This is purely just to set things up initially. With our patch function created, we'll insert a copy function before it, and here we want to copy the entire link of our app that includes the link ID parameter at the end, and the value that that link ID parameter should fill in is with the resulting link ID column from our patch function. We'll concatenate our link with our patch function, and at the end of our patch function, we'll insert dot link ID. We can select a record, then click share, and we'll go to our SharePoint list to see the new record. Here we can see the link ID, the item ID that it's linking to, and the users that have access. We can go back to our notepad and paste what's copied to our clipboard, and we can see our entire URL now with that special link ID parameter and value at the end of it. With our links now being created, we're going to use named formulas to handle the logic for reading and validating these links. Let's go through the named formulas one by one. We'll create a named formula called FX Magic Link, and here we want to look up the Magic Links list where the link ID is equal to the value in our link ID parameter. We can detect the parameter in our app using the param function and passing in the text name of our parameter. In this case, we want to return this record. This looks up the record from the magic links list based on the link ID passed in the URL. And then we can use that to find the actual record from our data source. We'll create another formula for FX record from link. We'll look up to our real SharePoint list that we're sharing a record from. And in this case, we'll say it's our employee case log list. Here we want the ID from this list to match the item ID column from our FX magic link formula. Again, we want to return this record. So now FX record from link is our true record, but only if the link is valid. If the user enters some random values in the link parameter, it won't find a magic link record, and it won't be able to return a real item ID. Next, we need to add some validation formulas. For the first formula, we'll call this FX magic link invalid. Here we'll check that a parameter was passed in and that our magic link formula is blank. That would mean that a matching magic link was not found for that supplied parameter. And this formula would result in true, telling our app that the magic link was invalid. Next is FX magic link expired. Here we'll check if the parameter is not blank and if the current date and time is greater than the expiration from our magic link record. If it is greater than that, this formula would result in true and tell us that our magic link is expired. Next, we'll create a check for FX magic link invalid user. And again, we'll check that our parameter is not blank and we'll check that the current user's email is not in the list of emails from our users column in the magic link record. This would mean that the current user trying to load the link is not an authorized user. So again, if any of these result in true, the link should not work. Next, let's handle what happens when the app starts. In the onStart property, we'll use these formulas to decide whether to set our selected record variable or not. If the link is valid, not expired, and the user has access, we'll set the record to our FX record from link value. This makes sure that only legitimate, non-expired, user-authorized links load the record. With our onStart property taken care of, we'll copy our if condition and head over to the start screen to send the user to a specific screen when they start the app. We'll paste in our if function, and at the beginning, we'll check to make sure that a link ID was actually passed in to the app. If all of our checks and balances are valid, then we send the user straight to the screen that has the form showing our record. Otherwise, we should fall back to the default screen. Maybe in this case, the table screen or some sort of home screen. If someone tries to tamper with the link and it eventually doesn't find a matching link ID, then they'll just be taken to the home screen and they would only see the data that presumably is being filtered to their account. With our formulas set up, our on start function created, and our start screen being set, we can now publish our app and try it out. 
We'll go back to our notepad and copy our link that we just created, and we'll see what happens. In this case, I created that link more than five minutes ago, so the expiration has already passed. We can see this took me back to the table screen. Let's modify this magic link record and push the expiration a little bit further. Now our link should no longer be expired, and if we refresh, we can see it takes us directly to our form screen, and our form is loading that same record that we have linked using the magic ID. We'll go back to our magic link record, and let's just remove my account from the users. We'll reload our magic link, and because my account is not listed in the users for that link, I'm taken back to the table screen instead of directly to the record. We'll add my account back in there. And then let's try to tamper with our link. We'll just change some of the values in our link so that they no longer match up with any of the values in our link ID column. We'll follow this link again. And you can see the link is not valid, so I'm taken to the table screen. Now, if you wanted to notify the user of the reason that their link didn't work, we could rewrite this formula a little bit. With this on start formula, if the link is invalid, then we notify the user of that. If the link is expired, we tell them it's expired. And if the user is not a valid user for that link, then we tell them they don't have access to use the link. If those conditions are passed, then we set the var selected record variable to the real record from our list. I wanted to show both ways of doing that in case you do or do not want to notify your users of that. We'll publish this, and we'll try our magic link again. In this case, the link works properly. We'll set it to an expired time, and try that again. And now you can see we get a notification that says our link has expired. Keep in mind this is kind of a goofy scenario because I'm sharing the record with myself, but in the real world, you'd be giving access to this record to somebody else. In my case, this table might be filtering to the current user, but I might want to be able to share this record with another user without having to build in some sort of permission or custom roles. Just to show you what's happening on the form screen, it's very simple because this form is just pointed to var selected record. So again, when the onStart function runs, if it passes all our checks, then our var selected record is set and we're navigated to this form screen as the start screen for the app. Now let's look at a more dynamic way of sharing our records. Instead of all the manually defined code that we had in our share button, we can instead open something like a drawer component. When that drawer opens, we could have various input controls that we'll use to patch our record back to SharePoint. In this case, we can select users with a combo box. We can set an expiration date, as well as an expiration time using a time picker. If we look at the event properties of this drawer, like the on select property, we can see what could happen here. When the share button is pressed, we can have our same copy function along with our patch function concatenated to the end. And our patch function in this case is passing in the date time from our date picker and our time picker controls. And then for the users property, it's creating a table of the users to patch back to the multi-select person column. After the patch is done, it's sending back the link ID and that gets concatenated to the end of our app. After this, we can notify that the link was copied. In our share button, we'd also want to reset all the controls inside of our Fluent2 drawer, and then we can try out our new experience. We'll select a record, click on share. We can select a user, select the date, and then pick a time. When we click share, we can see our link is copied, and we can go over to a text file and paste this once again. Here's our new link, which we'll follow. And that loads right into our app and takes us to the correct record. Again, if any of our checks and balances are not correct, then the user that is using this link will not be able to get into the record. We could even take this a step further by adding a gallery into our drawer that filters our magic links by the selected item ID, as well as the created by email equaling the current user's email address. In this way, we can allow them to copy the link again 
or we can allow them to remove the link. In this way, we're creating a sharing experience that's very similar to what people would expect in something like SharePoint or OneDrive. And you could style this even further to look more similar to those. Before we wrap up, it's important to mention that this is just a front-end security technique. It helps prevent casual or unintended access through URLs, but it does not replace proper road-level security or permissions in your data source. You can think of magic links as that first layer of defense where they make it safer and more controlled, but your underlying data should always be protected by the right SharePoint or Dataverse permissions. Many times in apps, you find that records are hidden from other users just for simplicity and for filtering. But these situations do come up where you need to share records with other users. Instead of re-architecting your app to include new fields that provide that front-end filtering, you can use these magic links as a secure way to allow access without exposing those internal IDs. And that's about it. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for future videos like this one. Let me know in the comments if you think this technique is worth using over regular deep linking. And also let me know what other Power App security or governance topics you'd like me to cover next. Thank you for watching and have a great day.